Good morning and welcome to the Salvation Army in Arbitillary. Today we focus on Remembrance Day and we are thinking of all those people who have lost their lives during all wars and all conflicts and we think of the families that have been affected and the people who have and still are suffering from the effects. So we want to pray this morning for comfort, for forgiveness and for peace. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you now with our hearts and minds. We bring everyone to you at the start of this meeting who have memories of their own wars and conflicts with thoughts of loved ones who have lost their lives in battle and the effects of battle. We pray, Lord, that your peace and your love will come and comfort all today. Lord, we don't always understand why these things happen and we don't always have the answers. But what we are sure of this morning is that you love every one of us and we know that through all that we are sure of one thing this morning that through our situations, our heartaches, you are there with us. Sometimes we don't feel like you are there, but we know that you are there because you promise never to leave us. Amen. So let's read from Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10 to 11. It says this, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armour. See, not some of it, but he wants us to put all of God's armour on so that we and you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Amen. We're going to sing our first song this morning. Um, it comes from our songbook and is number 981. And this hymn encourages us to be strong. It encourages us to put on the full armour of God and to stand firm in our faith. And verse 1 says, Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh. Raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armour on, stand firm everyone, not just some of us but all of us, and rest your cause upon his holy name. Enjoy.
we are going now to um, watch a clip and it's, um, it's entitled The Donut Girls and I'm sure all you Salvationists out there would probably know the story of The Donut Girls. I don't know if you remember during World War I, you probably don't, I certainly don't, but the Salvation Army sent women to France to lift the spirits of the soldiers and to serve them a little comfort and food. And the women became known for making donuts. And when America entered the war, Evangeline Booth placed the entire Salvation Army in the USA on a war service basis. And at the request of uh, Lieutenant Colonel William Barker, 11 women officers were handpicked and were sent over to France to see how they could help. And many officers followed. Both the men and women put their lives in danger as there were bombs falling and, of course, uh, the danger of gas. But let's watch this clip now and watch the work uh, that they, they did. By the time of World War I, the Salvation Army had spread across the United States, bringing its ministry of soup, soap, and salvation to thousands in need. Led by one of the country's first female commander-in-chiefs, Evangeline Booth. When it was clear that the United States was going to be joining World War I, and they talked about it and they said, you know, if we're going to be sending American boys over there, we need to go with them. We need to find a way to go with them. The 12 hand-selected Salvationists arrived on the European shore within days of the first arrival of American soldiers. Among the women was Helen Proviance, a Huntington, Indiana native whose hard work and determination made her a perfect candidate for shipment overseas. They set up huts, they set up tents, they served coffee and hot chocolate, and they prayed with soldiers and helped out where they could, giving news of home, just giving hope because you know these young men were so homesick. And so having someone there on the front line with them who could act as a mother, who could act as a little bit of home, really meant a lot to these young boys. And the Salvationists really were on the front lines, often closer to the action than many of the commanders. General Pershing was uncomfortable with the idea of women being so close to the action. He didn't want them on the front lines because he didn't want to be responsible for them. And the response from the Salvation Army and from the women who went over were, you're not responsible for us, we're responsible for ourselves, we chose to do this. And so they did, they followed along with the soldiers, they followed the ammunition trains, they were right there with them and they got muddy and dirty and cold and you know Helen came back and told stories about how she would wake up in the morning completely covered in frost. She had 19 different spots just on her feet that had turned black from frostbite but it was worth it for them. It really was because it meant that they could be there especially when these boys would come back from battle and they were boys. They were very young. When they would come back, these Salvationists would be standing there waiting for them, and they would literally divide the soldiers up into two lines, the ones who would survive and the ones who would not. And they would go with the ones who would not. They would guide them over, make sure that their eyes were washed, hold their hands, and stay with them for their last moments. By October of 1917, edible luxuries were completely gone. Helen and fellow Salvationist Margaret Sheldon knew they needed to come up with something to boost the spirits of the despondent soldiers. They were trying to figure out what kind of a goodie they could make that would give these, these young boys some hope. And she and Margaret looked at the supplies that they had. They said, okay, we have sugar, we have lard, uh, we have flour. What can we do with this? And they thought, donuts, we can make donuts. These are the perfect ingredients for donuts. And so the first night that they cooked, they were only able to make about 150 of them. And the word spread and it was, went from one camp to the next, to the next. And all of a sudden they had literally thousands of American soldiers going, we want donuts too. The women quickly devised a way to mass produce their donuts on the battlefield, training other Salvationists and repurposing available tools wine bottles became makeshift rolling pins. 
Empty condensed milk cans and shaving cream tubes provided the true donut shape. By the year's end, the Salvationists could make up to 9,000 fresh donuts every single day for their grateful American soldiers. And so they were so excited that it was the highlight of their letter back home. And the newspapers back home started to pick up on it that all of these men are talking about donut girls. Who are these donut girls? As the word spread, donations to the Salvation Army skyrocketed, as did the popularity of donuts themselves. By war's end, over 250 Salvationists would serve overseas, but none were more famous than the donut girl herself, Indiana's own Helen Proviance. The story of the donut girls continued along with Helen and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And you may be familiar with something called Donut Day. That started back in 1938 in Chicago by the Salvation Army. It was such a, a huge success that Donut Day was actually declared a national holiday. It's celebrated every year. So it's amazing that a hundred years later, the story is still being told, it's still being shared. I think the legacy that, that Helen and all of the other donut girls left behind is this, this legacy of hope. That even in dark times, even in really painful times, there's always that ray of hope and sometimes it looks like a donut. Wow, it's wonderful, isn't it? Now, we're going to sing again, and it's number 522 in our books, in our songbook. This song was composed in 1886 by the, the name of Russell K. Carter, who taught at a military school. It is said that his military experience was reflected in the song, and we're going to sing that song today. And verse 2 says this, Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Amen. <laughs>
We are now going to have a band piece brought to us by our bandmaster here at Abitaleri. Alan will now introduce that band piece to us. Thank you, Alan. Good morning. My taste in music is pretty wide ranging from the brass band to classical and some, if not all, popular music. As a Salvation Army bandmaster, I preferred my band pieces to make the listener aware that behind the music was a message which, by and large, all Salvation Army music is about. Having said that, a lot of modern Salvation Army music is written to show off the expertise of the players, and I'm not against that. Some years ago there was an international congress in London called Boundless. There were lots of bands from all over the world and I remember one festival when a band played a piece of music that showed off their playing skills and left everyone in no doubt that this was brass playing of the highest order. Then an African band played their piece, an old Salvation Army classic called The Penitent. Jesus, see me at thy feet nothing but thy blood can save me. Even today, as then, it was that music that stayed in my mind. I could have chosen any number of pieces, but my choice this morning could not have a clearer message. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord. When will they realise people need the Lord? And those words are found in the Salvation Army Songbook, number 418.
enjoyed that. Thank you, Alan, for that. That was lovely. Now, before Mike comes and gives a few thoughts this morning, I'm going to bring a Bible reading. And then we're, um, we're going to have um, a song by the Boston uh, Songsters um, entitled My Simple Prayer. So, um, so before all that, um, and before Mike brings what God's put on his heart for this weekend, we will read from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and it's entitled, There's a Time for Everything. And I'm reading from um, the New Living Translation. Verse 1. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. May God add his blessing to his word. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Worship on Remembrance Sunday. Today is Remembrance Day. In fact, it's Remembrance Sunday. Across the whole of the United Kingdom, thousands of people from every walk of life will be preparing in their own ways to show their respect to a friend, a father, grandfather, fellow soldiers, veterans, ex-servicemen. Indeed, from our own ranks here in the Salvation Army, we have given our lives in the service of our Lord, in the service of our country. This is a quote from the Salvation Army website like this. We usually think of attacks on a civilian population of Great Britain as a feature of the Second World War, epitomised by the London Blitz. But during the Great War, Britain was bombed by both airplanes and warships. On the 16th of December 1914, Less than five months after the outbreak of the First World War. The towns of Scarborough, Hartlepool and Whitby, all in the northeast of England, were attacked from the sea. At number seven, Victoria Place, Hartlepool, Salvation Army officer, adjutant, William Avery was killed instantly when a shell struck the house. He had been bringing his family downstairs and was coming down himself when the German naval shell exploded. William and Julia Avery, the officers in charge of West Hartlepool Citadel, had served together for many years, 20 years ago, in various Salvation Army churches in Ireland and also the north of England. Today we also remember many other services. We remember the police, the fire service, the ambulance service, the NHS. We also remember all manner of people, to you and to yours, to every service across this land of ours. The stewardship of which has been placed into our hands. In 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 10, you hear. 
each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Faithful stewards. These great people, you and also me, these bastions of hope and peace, showing their love for everyone, for people from every walk of life, their very own neighbours. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 39 of the New Living Translation, Jesus says these words, love your neighbour as yourself. We have heard this quote many times. Love your neighbour as yourself. By way of a slight reflection on my own part, if I may. When I was on parade in Her Majesty's forces in Germany, known at the time as the British Forces of the Rhine, which is part of the British Army in Germany. I had the great privilege of being present at many Remembrance Day parades. Dressed in what they used to call number two dress. Boots worn, highly polished, or bald as they used to call it. Hair cut to within an inch of its life every facet of which was cleaned to the highest standard. Sat in the church after the parade, your mind would wander to times in your career when comrades had lost their lives, either through an accident of service to the crown or through other means. You would look at the battle flags hanging from the church walls, motionless, the gilded golden thread, fading in the shafts of iridescent light, shining through the stained glass windows, projecting colourful shadows on the flagstone floors. You would laugh inwardly, at something they used to say or do, a daft joke or a silly saying. You would think of a great friendship forged on the anvils of time, forged in steel or ever in your mind. So in conclusion, let us look and think about this next piece of scripture, which has been taken from John chapter 15, verse 13, from the King James Version. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Remembrance Sunday is an opportunity to remember all our fallen and not to let history repeat itself, to remember loved ones, to remember the great gifts of light, to respect all life in all its forms across the whole world, across the whole of our earth. I would like to quote some of the words from an older edition of the Songbook of the Salvation Army, printed in 1953. The song was written by Jeremiah Amos Ranking, and it is number 949 in the said book. It's a little black book. In fact, I'll show it to you now, shall I? I'm sure some of the old folk, if I may use that expression, 
know it well. Here we go. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide upholding you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. What a wonderful, wonderful song. I'd like to pray for you now, if I may. And it goes like this. God, to guide you, God, guard you, God, to keep you, God, to hide you, in his bosom forevermore, son to watch you, son to teach you, son to help you. Son, to heal you with his life, his blood outpoured. Spirit with you, spirit in you, spirit through you, spirit show you. You are God's love forevermore. Amen. As I come to the end of what I felt the Lord had laid in my heart, I'd also like to say the same phrase that always come to mind. When I'm feeling a bit low or I'm struggling with life's little indecisions that pop into your mind, it goes something like this. Don't look down and ponder look up in awesome wonder. And I think if we can do that, put it into our lives, and get into the habit of thinking God is in our lives. He is there for us. He is our pathfinder. Take care everyone. Have a good Sunday service and remember all the people who have gone before you, happy memories.
Let us pray. This will be our closing prayer, our benediction. Let us go out into the world with love. Let us go out with love in our hearts. Let us go out with joy in our hearts. 
Let us go out with faith in our hearts. And let us go out with Jesus in our hearts. Amen. God bless you. Bye now. Oh, God.